In the 40 some odd years that I've been in the business as a makeup effects artist and a visual effects supervisor, um, I hear the question over and over again since the beginning, and that is, how do I get into the business? And that's a tough question because there is no set answer, and I think you'll always hear that from everybody. Everybody's journey is going to be different, and everybody's opportunities are going to be different. The way I started doing makeup effects was through Don Post Studios, which then introduced me to the world of film. Um, I called Don Post Studios one day out of the blue to see if they were hiring. And I talked to Don Post Jr. that day. And he said, hey, can you come in tomorrow? And I went, whoa, I hadn't expected that. I had just simply found Don Post Studios' phone number in the phone book and decided, okay, well, hey, um, what the heck? I've always liked their masks and I know that they do special projects. So I'll give them a call. So I called them out of the blue. And the next day, I was working at Don Post Studios. Now, I was working painting um, $1.99 Frankenstein masks, but it, was, but it was a start. And from there, I worked my way up and through and, and became a, a assistant man, a lab manager uh, for Don Post Studios, working on special projects. And, um, and that uh, kind of got my foot in the door because that introduced me to people who were making films and then I segue from Don Post Studios to um, working makeup effects on on projects. Um, the very first film I worked on, which was a Joe Dante film, was Hollywood Boulevard and uh, I was playing Godzilla in a Godzilla suit that I had made. And then later on uh, I teamed up with Chris Wallace and the two of us did the underwater makeup effects for Joe Dante's next film, Piranha. Um, without that series of events, I don't know if I would be where I am today, having done films like uh, Splash and developing Daryl Hannah's um, mermaid costume, and then uh, uh, going on to continue to work with Ron Howard doing uh, Cocoon, making animatronic dolphins and the pods, the cocoons themselves. Um, and then uh, going on to um, do uh, films like, uh, well, doing films like E.T., creating his heart light, and um, uh, Beetlejuice, which I was responsible for the makeup effects on Beetlejuice and, of course, won a, an Academy Award for. Um, having an Academy Award uh, has a tendency to help a lot as far as uh, continuing a career in that, uh, in that business. And then I segued into also doing um, visual effects. Now my journey isn't the same as somebody else's journey. And like I say, everybody's journey is going to be different. The one thing that I can say is that over the years, people have come to me and asked me, how do I get into the business? And usually they bring a portfolio in. I can't tell you how many portfolios I've looked at over the years and flipped them open and flipped through the pages and basically seen every single piece of work that this person has done ever since they got interested in doing monsters. And my single most valuable piece of advice to those people has always been just put in your portfolio your absolutely best work that you believe in your heart reflects a professional look. If you feel that your work is competing on a professional level, then that's the items that you keep in your portfolio. Now, not all of them are going to be absolutely uh, professional and, and um, the best anybody has ever seen. It just has to be the best that you've done so that you feel comfortable about every single page that you flip over. You're proud of that work and say, I did this, I did this, I did this. And what we don't want to hear is excuses because in the end result, the audience doesn't know what the excuses are. So the ability, so 
to have your portfolio be filled with what you consider to be your best work and be able to stand behind it without excuses is your best ammunition on the front lines as far as going in for interviews. How do I go in for an interview? Well, how did I get hired at Don Post? I just called one day. Sometimes that's all it takes is just knowing who you want to talk to or at least an idea as to where you want to work. Give them a call. Drop in. Be spontaneous. The worst they're going to say is no. Sometimes they say yes. And what do you know? If they say yes, well, then you've got yourself a foot in the door and you've got yourself a start of a career. And again, nobody's journey is going to be the same. But the bottom line is, don't be afraid. The fear of being turned down or the fear of somebody not wanting to talk to you or the fear that your stuff is not good enough is the single worst thing that there is in keeping you from getting that career in the first place. Uh, again, you never know how the cards are going to be dealt. None of us know how the cards are going to be dealt. So go ahead, throw those cards on the table and see what happens. Your best bet is to play the game. You're not going to win if you don't play. And the only way to play is put yourself out there. Now, also, there's all kinds of different places that you can make monsters for. You know, there's haunted attractions, there's theme parks, there's theater, um, there's toy manufacturing, there's all kinds of areas where that kind of ability can shine. Now, of course, a lot of people, uh, including myself, love to do films and TV, and that's what our goal is. Uh, certainly, that's what my goal is, is doing, you know, film and TV work. And that's the goal that I set for myself. Now, at one time, I worked for Don Post Studios, and I did segue into film work. But I segued into film work by just stepping away from Don Post Studios, which was an established job for myself, and throwing myself into movie work. Now, yeah, I had a, the ability to do Piranha, but after Piranha, there was no guarantees. Again, I had to rely on my wits and my talent and my just, um, um, you know, my initiative. And that's really what it boils down to as far as how do I get in the business? Nobody can give you a surefire answer to that. But if you don't try, then the only thing you'll be guaranteed of is you won't get in the business whatsoever. Now, sculptures are great to, to do photographs of. Doing makeups on friends, doing makeup for student films is a great way to get footage and photos and give yourself a, a target for what you've got to make. Um, again, I loved the Universal Monster films and my favorite was The Wolfman. And so, in a way, I, I've always wanted to be the Wolfman. So in order to be the Wolfman, I had to teach myself makeup and put that makeup on myself and become, you know, and become the Wolfman. And I have some home movies, you know, kicking around of me as a kid, you know, wearing my Wolfman makeup. And um, so I always knew that myself, I always knew that I wanted to be in film. And uh, I knew that I always loved monsters. If I could play monsters or do monsters for movies, that would even be better. So I knew what my goal was early on, and I kind of just stayed at that and continued to try different things. But even though I put myself out there, a lot of it was luck. But even though it was luck, it was all about being there to encounter that luck. So it's really, um, you know, so it's a really a matter of what do you do to get out there? You just do whatever you have to and just be creative about it. And as creative as you are about, you know, your monster work, you just have to be just as creative to find the work in order to put that interest and those hobbies into application. 
So, you know, again, you can be your own worst enemy about not going through with your ideas, going through with your initiative, putting yourself out there, worrying about failure. Hey, everybody fails at some time or another. And what you do is you build on your failure to you get better and you go to your next step and you may fail again, but you've made one more step forward. It's all, it's all about keeping your eye on where your goal is, where you want to, what you want to do, and you just keep at it. You just keep trying. And uh, again, the, those portfolios that you put together, um, you want to put your best, best foot forward and you just want to keep creating. That's, you know, that's something that, that I've always done. Uh, and that is you just keep creating. And eventually, um, with luck, it'll, it'll, pay, it'll pay off. And that's, that, and that's all I've got to say about how to get into the business. Okay.